Hey family, it's Tasha Mom Bear Prepping. You already know what time it is. Get your drink, baby. Pull up. Let's talk about it. So in the theme of this entire week, keeping the water theme going, talking about water, all things water, um, we're going to get into containers and storing water for long-term storage today. So if you have not been here for the rest of the week, you know, the first week we did safety, water treatment, basically, hey, what are the steps to make water safe? We've talked about rain barrels yesterday. On Tuesday, we talked about, what did we talk about? Um, we talked about, see, I'm already, I'm already, oh, filtering, filtering systems, right? So, uh, Monday, right, safety, water treatment, Tuesday, we did, um, the water filtering, so we went in depth with that, uh, yesterday, we went in depth with rain barrels and catching water, today, we're going to do containers, um, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about, during the premiere, we're going to be talking about sourcing water, that's another really, really big topic for getting water from different sources, and how to make that safe, and extra things that you should be thinking about when you are trying to get water from other locations um, that are much um, higher probability of being um, contaminated from jump, right? And then Saturday, we're going to go for the grocery list. And that's really going to just be everything that has to do with water, uh, preps, things to get, the treatments, different things um, that we use when we talk about storing water, keeping water, um, and being ready. So let's get into it without further ado. How to store water in containers and for long-term storage. So I broke this up into three categories. <coughs> oh, excuse me. That was a good one into three categories. Um, first, talking about containers themselves, right? Um, second, talking about treatment, how to actually treat the water, um, and then storage, how to store it to, you know, make it last as long as you possibly can in your situation. Okay, so containers. Before we start, I have one kind of rule, and that is um, store and stack water like crazy, okay? Nothing is more irritating than folks that tell me, um, they do not buy water in the store. They do not buy bottled water in the store. They don't um, keep stored water in their home, right? They don't fill containers and keep it in their home uh, because they're like, look, we live on land. We have a well. We have a creek. We have a pool. We have a we have a this. We have a that. We live next to a river. We have, you know, the excuses are huge of why um, they do not stock water. I think that that is a mistake. I think that every single family should stack water because you do not know when something could happen. Um, plus, all those outside sources that you just named could be compromised by one event, and that's just by fallout alone, okay? Which this country has never been closer than it is now of that being a situation that happens to us here in, in our future, okay? Um, and so you need to think that through. You need to think through, you know, the scenarios that do include not having the ability to get water from those sources or it's total chaos and that stuff is very very contaminated again you can make it safe possibly um, to drink but to me part of preparedness is being savvy is being um, setting yourself up for options right having options on the table and that is just another option of having um, water and stuff in your house plus you know if you go through a small situation and you don't have to haul water from somewhere you have the convenience of okay I've stored a little bit of water that will take us through this event that's much easier okay on your mind body and soul than having to immediately you know do something extra and haul water and do all this extra stuff to make it safe when you know just keeping some in your home even a little bit could have been beneficial okay all right so let's now that i got that two cents out let's get into a container so when i talk about containers there's all types of containers any container that will hold water is what i'm talking about so i'm talking about store-bought containers so you buying individual um um, bottles of water, gallon containers full of water. So I'm talking about store-bought and you storing those in your basement or a cupboard or wherever, right? Stacking them in a room. I've seen them, st I've seen them stored all types of ways. Now, uh, people will say, and we'll talk about this when we talk about storage, you know, uh, again, oh, oh my gosh, why did you stack? Why, why do you have water stacked like that? Water, that water is going to go bad. Da, 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 da. Um, over time, that water will start to, um, the water doesn't go bad, just so you know, but the plastics do start to break down um, and leach into the water and then your water can be contaminated. But again, if we are working off the theme that all water is contaminated until it's not, 
it doesn't really matter okay if that water sits there and eventually something happens and it gets compromised and you know but you need to be thinking that in your head that just because you're getting it from a water bottle that it's safe to drink. You know, if that water has been sitting there for a long time, I would be pouring it out of the bottle, testing it, making sure it's still good to go uh, before I'm drinking it. Okay. That's the difference of um, assuming that you bought something, kept it on a pallet somewhere um, or in a room and then, oh, it's still good. Well, if it's been years and years and years, you know, that water, when you open it, you need to assume that it's contaminated and make sure and then make it safe to drink okay um so what i'm telling you long story short is get your water get your water in your individual water containers get it in your gallon containers whatever but buy water get water okay second thing is buying water containers right storage that you can then put water in containers that you put water in close them up seal tight and you're putting a treatment in it a pre preservation of that water for long-term storage okay um, again i'm going to refer you when it comes to measurements to that tech med that i put in my um video on monday i'll put it in this video as well and link it go to that it because you need a source when when somebody asks me oh well just how much do you put a bleach in a in a gallon container how much goes in a 55 gallon how much goes for this how much goes for that the thing is is you need to do the research so that you can understand how to do this you cannot one take somebody's word i'm telling you right now don't take my word when it comes to stuff you need to learn how to do this stuff yourself and to learn where to get it so go to that tech manual Find those couple pages that go over calculations. It goes over calculations of whatever type of bleach you're using, right? Chlorine liquid bleach, um, if it's calcium hyperchlorate, if it's uh, sodium hyperchlorate, uh, if is it granules, is it liquid? I mean, it's gonna go over all of that stuff, okay? Um, we're gonna go get into a treatment in a minute, but that book is what's gonna tell you how much you need for storing stuff, right? Um, and you need to treat it to be able to store it long term, okay? There's individual tablets you buy for individual stuff and there's long term stuff, okay? Now, again, I'm kind of jumping ahead. Let's stay in the containers. Um, 55 gallon drums, 50 gallon drums, 30 gallon drums, stackables, right? Um, you have smaller stuff, three and a half gallon stackables. You have five gallon stackables. You have, uh, I, don't, I don't know who it is sells. They sell like a 30 gallon stackable, right? And it has the spout and everything on it. Um, you just need to really make sure that um, whatever your situation is, what kind of container makes sense for where you live. When we were in an apartment, we didn't have no 55-gallon drums there on site, okay? Um, because that didn't make sense to to have there. We we didn't have any location where we could have that, right? Um, I had a, a very low-level water catchment trash can on the balcony, on the patio area, but again, Again, it barely rained there we were in cali so it, it didn't it didn't matter right um when we were in other locations you know what we could do we could do but i'm telling you a lot of times we were in apartments we were in places where we we were limited on our space and so we had tons of five gallon stackables um 3.5 stackables right um we had a ton of stuff i'm going to link a video where i show you specific containers in that video uh especially if you live in an apartment i physically show you the three and a half stackables we have i physically show you the five gallon stackables we have because i did that video when we were in an apartment so take a look at that video because then you'll get to see those different containers that i'm talking about i think i even link them um in that video so that you can get them also additionally if you go down to my um again we're going to do a grocery list on saturday but if you go down into the description box and you click on my Amazon um, influencer link for buying stuff. I have tons of folders that I've built that have different items from Amazon preparedness items. There's a folder there for water preparedness. If you go into it, I have already linked the different types of water containers that you can get different sizes, different things. Okay. Um, the preservation, all that stuff. Okay. The treatment, so take a look at that and um, g g be getting the things that you need to get, okay? Um, rain barrels is another one. Again, there's all types of sizes that you can get, but that's another type of container for water storage, right? Um, totes, cisterns. I mean, this goes high when it comes to water um, containers that you are putting water in and are preserving it so that you have it for later, okay? 
um, filtering systems in your home. The more large filtering systems you have, like the Berkey, like this, whatever, that's water that's on hand. That is it. whatever water you have in there at the time, that is a way to store a large amount of water. We have the largest Berkey that they have. And so if I keep that full, that's six gallons of water that's filtered, that's holding in that that you know thing that filtering system at all times you know if you make let's say a few of those uh homemade ones and you have them different places maybe one in the garage maybe one in another craft area or another area or the workspace right that's different areas that you again have water um that's holding reused containers so soda juice containers soda containers um old water containers i don't throw nothing away i use it all okay and i fill it up with water now a lot of people will say you know those those milk jugs that are like the milk ones that plastic's very thin uh, it tends to get pinholes and poke water through well i still fill those up I tape over the top, I write on a Sharpie old uh, on the outside. I don't even preserve that water. I just fill it up and I either put it in the garage or I put it in my garden area and I water plants from time to time with that, okay? I have some stuff that needs to be watered by the garage. I'll get the water that I put in the garage, right? It's a rotation. If I was going to keep it for long term, probably throw a little bit of bleach in there and then put it up, okay? Um, but to me, those are not containers for long, long-term storage, right? Those are not the proper containers because um, you have the possibility of that plastic uh, is not as durable and breaking down sooner, okay, over time. But I reuse everything and put it in. At a minimum, let's say you fill those containers and you do nothing with the water. You do not preserve it. You do not do nothing. You just put the cap on it and you, you write old on it and you put it away in a corner of the garage in a shed on the side of the house, whatever, right? Um, in the backyard, just kicking it wherever it's in the sun, whatever. Okay. At a minimum, that's water that can be used to flush a toilet. Okay. Um, rinse stuff off, right? Uh, it, you just, there's a lot of uses for water and there's potable water. We talk about drinking water, drinking water, drinking water, but there's a lot of other things that take water or that it would be nice to have water. Um, and so it's important that you're utilizing everything that you can possibly utilize. Okay. So moving on to treatment. So you have um, chlorine bleach, you have sodium hypochlorate, you have calcium hypochlorate, you have, um, I think it's iodide, iodine, um, the tablets for like individual stuff, different treatments like that. Um, you've got, oh, pool shock. So somebody um, asked me the other day about pool shock. You know, is pool shock safe, pool shock safe? Well, pool shock is um, granules. That's, that's, that's a... Uh, calcium hypochlorate, right? If you go and you say, hey, I want some calcium hypochlorate, pool shock and all types of pool treatments are, is what's going to come up, okay? Again, when you're talking about treatments, how much of that do I use, whatever? Well, all products are different, right? And so you need to see what you have. You need to go to the tech med and it talks about when you're talking about and you're using either liquids, granules, um, you know, you're using chlorine bleach, it breaks it down with what you're using. And then you need to see what your product has in it, the percentages, whatever, and then do the math and calculation to figure out how much of that you're going to use for treating something, treating water. Okay. Um, I cannot do that because there's so many variables on the amount of water you have, the way you're keeping it, what is the components in whatever product you have. Again, somebody yesterday asked me about, well, I have bleach tablets. It's the same thing, baby. Do the math. Look on the back of that package. And it's going to tell you what each tablet is. It's concentrated, what is in it, and the amount that is in each tablet. And then you're just going to convert that from going off the manual of, of how much it says you need for whatever the container is that you're trying to treat, right? The amount of water you're trying to treat at the time, okay? Um, it's, it's, it's very difficult because there's different... Um, amounts of water everybody's trying to treat and there's different and you know is it for for individual use right now right are you treating something to be drank and used now are you treating something that trying to put in container and put it away later right um there's a lot of variables and so that's why i say you got to do your research i'm giving you the manual so take a look at this manual i'm sure there's other research stuff it's just what we use it's the military tech manual it's open to the public you can literally google this tech and find it yourself um or follow the link on the description box below you guys okay um i want to show you a product that i like personally um from when i'm doing um 
containers when I'm doing my three and a half gallon, my five gallon, my 55 gallon. So basically my long-term storage, this is just the easiest thing to get. And that's concentrated um, water uh, preserver. Now this stuff is in my, is linked in my um, Amazon influencer page, you guys. Um, but I love this because it's, it's concentrated. It's already there. It's, it's ready to go. Okay. Um, it comes with a little booklet. This one's a little wore out, but basically this whole entire thing, if you're doing a 55 drum, this whole thing goes in it. Um, I like it though, because in here it breaks it down, uh, you know, if you're doing smaller containers, okay? Uh, add eight drops um, for every gallon of water, uh, and then it has some little math here, right? So a five gallon, eight drops a gallon, 40 drops, right? And it, ha it has it's a little eyedropper on the top and then you just drop it so i've done all my th stuff with that i find uh, it's very annoying with bleach because um you know bleach is messy it just pours um you know when stuff's like oh you just need a drop of bleach it's much harder unless you have an eyedropper and different things like that but a lot of people just if you're not thinking about this stuff you don't have that stuff i find a product like this to be much much easier when we're talking about long-term storage and storing something for a long time and then you set it and forget it right close up that barrel and you're good to go now let's talk about storage you're talking about a cool dark place um it can be warm so a lot of people say well i live somewhere that's super super hot and and i have the water in the garage um that's fine the, the only thing you want to and even people that keep water outside the only thing is um heat okay heat is the um like direct sun right um because that over time is what's breaking down the plastic right um that heat hitting it for years and years months and months you know that's why people say water bottles in cars right um and no, not drinking water bottle in cars it's because that sun has been beaming on that water bottle um through the glass right and it's just heating it up and it's breaking down that plastic as that's happening right it's not immediate but it's it is doing a, a negative effect if you will um as soon as the sun is just really beaming down on it so trying to keep it in a shaded area if it's outside it's next to a shed or you have it somewhere catching water or maybe it's you just storing these water bottles that or water containers that you've put water in but they're under a tree you know they're totally closed up preserved um you got some plastic over them whatever but try to keep the direct sun off of them um heat is you know it, it's just something you can't get away from same thing with very low temperatures um you know and freezing you know if you're keeping stuff outside and it gets very cold you're having to empty those barrels and to me that's a lot of work so you want to try to keep either barrels inside or if it's something like our rain barrels you know you've got to drain them for you know you're going to get a week of really bad low 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 temperatures it is what it is you've got to um drain them now you can drain them into other containers bring that water inside that's a lot of water though so um think that through what your game plan is for that okay uh, my favorite thing is keeping them indoors in a garage in a shed um, you want to keep them up off the cement i get this question a lot why do you say keep stuff off cement well that's because cement is very porous it 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 sucks up everything that it comes in contact with like oils especially if it's in a garage where there's maybe been cars worked on that type of thing any kind of chemicals you know people work around you know garage and cement and different things fall into it those chemicals seep in and they will leach into the plastic and then leach into your water okay so um rule of thumb really is i just put some two by fours down um some wood down so that it's not direct contact with the barrels and the cement okay um same thing with my rain barrels you know i use some old cement blocks um to uh you know lift them up i painted them whatever so they had paint plus they had some other paint on them right well over time you know you wouldn't want that to accidentally leach into your plastic whatever um the, you know the possibilities there that they could happen maybe it doesn't uh, but we put a piece of wood down as an extra barrier plus as an extra um leveler okay um so just keep that in mind you have barrels you go and get some barrels you fill them up you preserve them with something you close them up and just make sure that they're up off of the cement if they're on the ground outside they're on some gravel they're on some um you know some dirt whatever they're gonna be fine you guys but just uh, in general i just like to get stuff off the ground just as one extra precaution um that if there is anything that's in the ground in that area that could seep in over time 
that I've done my due diligence to make sure that that doesn't happen. Okay. Um, let's talk about a couple things I already mentioned. So storage, right? Um, people ask how long should you keep water, rotate water, all that good stuff. So, um, as a rule of thumb in general, if you can rotate water, rotating water is, is, is good. That's a lot of work though. Okay. So I'm just going to keep it real. Once I put it up, I'm not rotating a lot of water unless I have to, right? It's, it's about to freeze or some reason. Um, this preserver is last five years. Um, put that in the barrels, leave it. Water's not going to go bad. Remember over time, the plastic is what starts to break down over time and then can possibly um, work into your water. Now, this is what I say about that. Um, I let water sit. That is my forever water, right? I preserved it. It's sitting and I'm not getting into it. Um, if it's SHTF, it's time to get into it. Okay, then we'll start working through it. We'll start getting our pumps, pumping it out as we need it, right? When we go to take that water out of those barrels, guess what we're doing? We're treating it as is, as if it's been contaminated. That's the trick. Never think that because you preserve something that it is still good. Water eventually will need to be treated again right so when we take that out whether it's been five years 10 years 50 i don't care right um we're going to take that water out and we're going to treat it we're going to treat it as if it's contaminated right we're going to test it from jump just just off a of gp see how it's how it's you know handled itself um and we're going to start doing the processes filtering it we're going to um boil it we're going because you don't know if it's been contaminated you have no idea especially if it's been sitting there for years okay and so we're going to treat it as if it's been contaminated old thing also water once it's sat for a very very long time it starts uh, moving around it is disgusting the taste of it so a lot of times water will sit for a really long time people will just take it out and drink it Ugh, it's bad right it has a bad taste and they're like the water went bad but that water, it's because it's been sitting so long, okay? And so stuff has settled and it's fine, but you have to shake it up. It needs to be shaked up, worked up um, so that it can have um, that taste. Also, the process of treating the water is going to help with that as well, okay? So just remember, if you remember anything treat water at all times like it's been contaminated if you you know shtf has been here for a while and you come across bottled water on pallets right i'm going to open that up and i'm not letting my babies drink that right from the bottle we are going to test it we're going to treat it okay we're going to pull it out of those containers treat it you can pretend that it's been contaminated and that's it and then move forward you're gonna have to make um, smart decisions and not just think about how things are now things are now okay you get a bottle of water right you open it up you drink it okay um you need to be getting in the mindset that it's contaminated until it's not even if you were the one that personally put it up put it away it looks pristine it looks like nothing has gone into it um you know you you, you pop the seal it just looks nice it's just it's it you know everything looks good right uh, you need to test it. You know, if you test it, uh, okay, then maybe you just need to do the process of where you're pulling it out and you're shaking it up because that taste thing is going to be an issue. Okay. And a lot of people that don't know that are going to assume that the water is bad and then not drink it. And now, you know, that's a lost opportunity to possibly save your life. Okay. Um, let's talk, let's, let's see in my notes and make sure that I said everything that I wanted to say, you guys. I think I did. Um, I'm sure that in the comments, there'll be some more questions. I'll make sure that I get on tonight and really try to answer your questions. Um, yesterday's, you know, premiere was really good with the rain barrels. Once I got to the part of the video where I was showing you physically my rain barrels, the chat was just going, the live chat was just going crazy with questions. Okay. Um, and I was trying to answer those as fast as I could, as quickly as I could. I think this is such an important topic because for example, look what's going on in Mississippi. I mean, it's just horrible. 
and, and they have already have been dealing with the boil notices and having to boil water and just the inconvenience of that. And then to be like, oh, you can't get no water at all now. And we don't have uh, you know enough to even disperse it out. I mean, it's just insane, right? Um, but the, the reality is that you cannot depend on your city water. You can't depend on these other things to always be there for you. Um, it's just like if you weren't on city water and you were on well water, you cannot just depend solely on that. You have have to give yourself options and you have to be ready for emergencies that could happen so that you're not stuck out there trying to stand in a line for a little bit of water or um you know your babies are not drinking right and your garden is dying and withering away and your animals are looking at you like i'm thirsty i want some more water you barely gave me any right um and and that that starts with you giving yourself and your family options. There will be water wars in the future. That's facts, okay? I can't give you no timeline, you know, I'm not no genie and just oh, it's going to happen now. I'm telling you though, water is an issue. It's starting to become an issue. <clears throat> Droughts is an issue, right? There's a lot of things happening that is affecting our water. We are literally watching our water um, containments disappear. And so, you know, you need to learn everything you can about water, procuring water, making water to save everything you could possibly know, right? And look at alternatives for different things, right? Uh, uh, you know, I, I cannot stress the amount of people that are going to pass from water by itself, whether they cannot get it at all or they drink it and it's bad water and they get sick, they get illnesses that they can't recover from and then they end up passing and it's going to be devastating. And so water, you know, is is. It's going to be king, right? So do what you can do now while you can. While you can go get a bunch of this. While you can go get your granules, right? Your your pool shock. You can go get your, you know, sodium hyperchlorate, you know. And just so you know, too, the two, sodium hyperchlorate is normally liquid forms um, bleach. And then um, the calcium is normally like your granule type stuff that you get, right? Um, I'd also love to see what you guys are using, right? Um, what's your favorite go-to? What's your favorite individual water um, uh, product, right? For individual use, right? For smaller amounts of water, individual stuff. Stuff that's good for hiking and smaller evolutions. Like, hey, we've got some water bottles here. Here's a couple tablets of this or here's some granules. Like, what's your go-to? Let us know in the comments. Everybody share your information, your, um, your wealth of knowledge that you are utilizing. And let's all make each other smarter, okay? So... I hope you guys stay blessed. I hope you continue to do the things today and I'll see you on tomorrow's uh, premiere. Take care. Bye.